as a fifth generation woman farming in my family. My experiences today are very different to those of the generations of women who came before me. People really did believe that the girls weren't as smart as boys and people just accepted that. 1972, the Whitlam government comes in and all of a sudden we've got free tertiary education and massive change for rural Australia. I was just one of so many thousands of young girls that flooded into our universities. At La Trobe, I chose sociology because it held a magnifying glass up to the world. When I first met Rob, my husband, I said, if we're going to be together, you need to go and do the subject feminism. And he did. So he won lots of points straight off. We were there being exposed to ideas and thoughts about women and society and how things worked, that when we returned to life in rural Victoria, it was never going to be the same again. In the early 1980s, women started what is now the Victorian Rural Women's Network. The early meetings, like the meeting that happened here in my house, were local women, women that I knew. At that stage, every Farmers' Federation in Australia had one vote per farm, which you know, in most cases, the majority of cases, was the vote of the male farmer. We took a stand and that was probably one of the big things that happened in terms of Victoria and then Australia, deciding that the voice of women in agriculture was just as important as the voice of men. We've got a long way to go. The fact that we've had the head of the National Farmers Federation a woman and now the first Federal Minister for Agriculture is a woman probably means that we're heading in the right direction. Margaret Mead said, never underestimate what could be achieved by a group of ordinary citizens coming together because fundamentally it's ordinary people who do create change. <laughs>